Hey everyone, it's Gian Lamario here. The first season of Arena of Solari is underway, and I'm sure many of you PvP enthusiasts out there are currently in the middle of that climb. Good luck to all of you. But for those of you who are perhaps struggling with PvP at the moment, I've prepared a video series that I think will help you out. Now, just a note, these videos are going to be a bit dense, and they will require a certain level of basic game knowledge. I'm not going to be explaining things like uh, what a CC counter is or the differences between CCs. If you're unfamiliar with those systems, then I highly suggest you check out the links in the description below to read up on those game mechanics on our official website. Now, the goal of this video series is to introduce Black Desert's fundamental PvP game principles. To some of you, these concepts will be new. And for others, it's going to be things you already know. But hopefully, this video series will expand your perspective on PvP and help you improve and succeed regardless of your experience. Now, let's begin with our first Black Desert PvP fundamental. The first and most important fundamental is knowing how to utilize protections. Black Desert is a game where defensive effects are more abundant and arguably stronger than offensive ones. And there's a reason for why this is the case. And that reason is crowd control. In Black Desert, getting hit by a crowd control, also known as CCs, leads to death in most cases. As a result, the primary gameplay objective that surfaces and drives Black Desert's PvP is the avoidance of CC at all costs. Whenever you use a skill that can lead to you being CC'd, whether the skill is unprotected, or it's a forward guard that can be punished from behind, or maybe a long animation skill that can be grabbed, you need to always play with that sense of the potential danger and risk of using those skills. If you are unable to defend yourself from crowd control, it is almost impossible to find success in Black Desert's PvP. Not all crowd control is created equal. Some CCs are telegraphed and easy to react to, but others fly towards you at insane speeds or they hit you from a mile away. In most other games, reacting to these types of attacks would be a tremendous burden and an almost impossible task for the average player. In fact, a lot of these attacks would probably just be considered overpowered and totally unreasonable. But in Black Desert, these kind of attacks are the norm. Now, you might ask, if it's so difficult to react to these CCs, why do they exist? How can they exist? And the answer to that is protection. Lots of protection. Every class in Black Desert will have access to differing amounts of protections and types of protections. And the budgeting of these effects will vary, but in general, everyone's going to have their own unique options to react to different situations with. With the abundance of protection in every class's kit, most classes can just deflect the majority of CCs by chaining protected skills. This means that some of the most threatening CCs in the game can be rendered ineffective simply by just maintaining a long duration of protection effects. New players learning PvP for the first time are often told to learn your protection rotation. And simply put, a protection rotation or protection chain, as some people call it, means using a protected skill, one after another after another. And for most classes in the game, if you do this, you can keep close to almost 100% uptime on protection effects. But for new players, Training in this method will discipline you on the idea of maintaining high protection uptime. If you're good at this, you will almost certainly find success in PvP. And personally, I think the most obvious way to gauge your improvement in PvP is just seeing how often you get CC'd. If you're being CC'd less than before, then you're probably doing a good job and you're improving. But here's where I want to impart my first new lesson. I want you to put aside the idea of protection rotations for now and instead think about the idea of maximizing the value of protections. Mastering defensive play goes beyond just rotating protected skill after protected skill. Instead, your new priority and focus should be on how to get the most value out of each protection skill. Whenever you use a protection, ask yourself, why am I using a super armor here at this exact moment? Maybe I'm better off using a forward guard instead. Or maybe I, I should have used invincibility. What exactly is the correct or best choice of protection at any given moment? Let's examine some gameplay to find out. Pretend you're a ranger, like me. Seems like you're fighting a Sork who's charging Dream of Doom. You know this skill is a ranged skill that does damage and is a knockdown CC. You're also at 10% HP. And all three protection types here will prevent you from being CC'd. But in this exact position, what would be the correct protection to use? Should you A, use a super armor and immune the CC, but tank the damage? B, use a forward guard to block the attack? 
Or C, dodge the skill with evasive explosion shot invincibility. First, let's see what happens when you use your typical super armor rotation of Breezy Blade into Flow Rushing Wave. And you're dead. Okay, so that's not ideal. Next, let's see what happens when you use a forward guard skill, like S Block. Looks like you managed to block both the damage and CC of Dream of Doom without burning any important cooldowns. Seems pretty good to me. Now let's see what happens when you use Evasive Explosion Shot. You managed to dodge both the damage and the CC, but you did have to burn a pretty important cooldown to do so. This is an inefficient usage of Evasive Explosion Shot. The point is, being caught up in a rotation that you've practiced a lot can cause you to autopilot skills. You may end up using skills that you shouldn't be using in specific moments. And that's why I'm here to encourage you to break those habits so you can actually adapt better in PvP. I'm now going to introduce two new concepts, passive defense and active defense. A passive defense means using protections just for the sake of staying protected. An autopilot protection rotation chain is what I would call a passive defense. You are relying on the protection effects to deflect CCs because you either can't see them coming or because they're just too fast for you to react to. On the other hand, you have an active defense. An active defense is when you choose to break away from your usual habits, and instead you make the conscious decision to use a certain protection in order to achieve a more favorable result or outcome. Knowing the differences between these two ways of defending are important for improvement. This begs the question then, what are the ideal protections to use for various situations? Let's start with Super Armor. The idea of Super Armor is that it allows you to complete your action without fear of interruption. Super Armor is the most abundant of all protections, and on paper, perfect Super Armor chaining leads to almost no counterplay outside of grapple and damage. This means that as a passive defense, Super Armor is very reliable for most classes as you can simply just immune any CCs that hit you. Super Armor should be your preferred option for handling CCs that are difficult to react against. Examples of these types of CCs are Entry or Engage CCs, such as Solar Flare from Warrior, or Shadow Stomp and Shuriken Malice from Ninja. Next is Forward Guard. This is the hardest and riskiest protection to use, but if you utilize it correctly, it can be much better than Super Armor. The reason for this is obvious, because not only does it block CCs, but it also preserves your HP and prevents you from being affected by debuffs like move speed slows or damage over time effects. But because forward guards can be punished, they are best utilized as an active defense. In situations where you have that presence of mind, to make the decision of using a forward guard instead of a super armor, you can extract huge value from this protection and perhaps even gain a momentary advantage in combat. In some situations where your back is against the wall, literally, the value and necessity of using forward guard increases tremendously. And sometimes it becomes the only option you have in order to survive. Something that you can do to improve your PvP skills is to review your own gameplay or others, and actually try to find situations where you can perhaps replace super armors with forward guards. For example, maybe if you were dealing with a ranged attack like Wizard's Lightning, you could have just blocked the attack with a forward guard instead of immuning it with a super armor because now you're debuffed with the move speed slow. Lastly, invincibility, also known as iframes. This is the most powerful protection in the game, and thus it is also the most valuable. Using iframes as a passive defense is fine due to their reliability, but you must also use them as part of your active defense. Misusing your iframes can quickly lead to you being unable to absorb offensive pressure, especially from fast grapple classes like Warrior and Ninja. The best situations to use iframes would be when you absolutely must avoid damage at all costs, or when you need to avoid a grapple. Let's look at this gameplay clip, this time from the 2022 NA Tavala Cup Finals. In this clip, Flannels, an Awakening Ranger, is in a 1v2 situation against Miss and Belly, who are playing Succession Kuno and Succession Witch. The reason why I chose this clip is because it illustrates the concepts that I talked about earlier really well. Passive defense, active defense, and breaking habits. Now, let's break down this clip to find out exactly what transpired in this sequence. We're going to poke a little bit at Flannels' play here also, 
to see where he might have been able to improve, but also to highlight the moments where you can really distinguish what makes a good player stand out from others. At the start, Flannels is in the middle of a super armor when he begins eating damage from Belly. He's hit by a lightning here, which is a ranged CC and a movement speed slow. So naturally, he backs off with a wind step iframe in case of any more incoming range damage. Also notice how he holds an S block for forward guard. However, the moment Miss invades his space, he reacts with the breezy blade into flow rushing wind for super armor in case of incoming CCs. Kunos can quickly get behind enemies, so using a forward guard is potentially risky. If Flannels continued holding that forward guard from the S block, he might have been punished, but instead, he made a conscious decision to react to the potential engage from Miss with super arm. Miss doesn't commit though, and now Flannels is exposed. Belly punishes the super armor with some range damage skills, and now Flannels' HP drops to below half. Now let's pause here. The Breezy Blade into Flow Rushing Wind is the most common super armor rotation that rangers use. But perhaps here, there actually might have been an opportunity for Flannels to use Breezy Blade into Wailing Wind instead for forward guard to block Belly's ranged attacks. This might have been more efficient, as he would have also blocked the incoming damage and debuffs. Of course, it's impossible to know if Miss would have attacked Flannels from behind the Wailing Wind forward guard, but the point is that Flannels would have needed to break away from the normal Ranger habit of autopiloting Flow Rushing Wind after Breezy Blade. Breezy Blade into Wailing Wind, on the other hand, is not a sequence that Rangers practice or use very often. Still, he managed to immune all the CCs, but he's just not getting maximum value from the protections in his kit. Now that Flannels is low, his only options at this point are to use iframes or forward guards, or else he risks dying to damage. Using forward guards this close to Akuno is a little bit too risky, so he uses another well-practiced iframe chain as a passive defense to dodge CCs and damage, and to slowly invade Belly's space. Right after the evasive explosion shot is another great moment. Most rangers like to chain two jumps of evasive explosion shot for more iframes, but at this exact moment, Flannels actually breaks the typical chain and uses Wind Step instead to switch into Awakening for a grapple while maintaining the iframe. Again, this is another example of conscious decision making and active defense that also sets up playmaking. Belly is caught in the middle of his skills animation here. After the grab, Flannels goes into a super armor chain to avoid retaliation from Miss, and he actually uses a Wind Step mid combo to iframe any potential grabs another example of an active defense. Belly is killed and Miss is caught by a straight knockback from Waltz of Wind and is forced to V. Flannels catches Miss one last time out of the V to steal the round. Wow, what a sequence. It's been a long lecture, but I hope all the information that I presented to you today is helpful and useful. Make sure to do your homework and practice some PVP in Battle Arena or Arena of Solari. My after hours are going to be on the official Discord, so you can contact me there. But that is gonna be all for today. Class dismissed.